When I lived in the city, going to Target was a daily thing. One day I had to go find some pants to wear for a party. So I went to Target to see what they had and if I could find anything I liked. I noticed this guy walked in behind me and every time I turned around, he happened to be there. So I thought it was just a coincidence since we would always end up on the same aisle. I walked over to the makeup to look for some new foundation because mine was gone. And I just happened to turn around and he was standing right there. So at that point, I knew something was up. He wasn't holding anything, just standing around trying not to make eye contact with me every time I would look at him. I walked to the checkout because I wasn't feeling comfortable anymore. I had this gut feeling that if I stayed in the store, something would end up happening. He then followed me to the checkout line. Nothing was in his hands, so he had nothing to pay for. He just stood there looking around. He was acting like I couldn't see him or even feel him looking at me. It was as if he was trying to stare into my soul. I paid and grabbed my stuff, but instead of walking out of the store, since I didn't want him to follow me out to my car, I instead walked over to the other end of the store to use the bathroom. He didn't follow me to begin with, but when I walked out of the bathroom he was standing right there in the men's section, looking at underwear and socks. Again, not holding a single thing. So I decided to walk around the store some more, just to see if he would follow me again. And he did. So I found the manager and pulled him to the side and whispered to him that an older man had been following me around the store the whole time I was there and that I've been walking around since I checked out, just trying to lose him. The manager told me that there have been prior kidnapping attempts related to sex trafficking and something like this happened a couple of months ago. He told me that I was smart to stay in the store. He then called the police and the guy left the store before they showed up. If you ever have a gut feeling, you should listen to it because that day could have ended a whole lot worse for me. A little background. Around November of 2019, I was running to a Target for some cupcake decorating supplies before meeting my aunt and cousin for lunch later that day at a relatively nice restaurant. With this being the case, I was slightly dressed up. Nothing too fancy, but I did look slightly older. It was around 10 in the morning, and I was walking to my car from the Target. I typically park pretty far back in parking lots because I hate fighting for parking spots. Suddenly a truck pulls into a parking spot a little ways in front of me and a man gets out. I freaked out as he started to walk up to me. He asked me if I was single and then tells me that I'm the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. I tell him that I'm underage and I have a boyfriend. I lied about that part, to which he replies that he would wait. This man had to be at least 40 years old. He then gets back into the truck and backs into a spot at the back of the parking lot. I was about halfway to my car at this point, but there was no way in hell I was going back to my car because I could tell that he was watching me. So I instead walk into a nearby frozen yogurt place. I was visibly shaken. I quickly grabbed a cup of yogurt and tried my best to look natural because this guy was looking at me through the window. I call my best friend who lives in the neighborhood, close to the shopping center, and he quickly said that he would be there soon. About 10 to 12 minutes later, my friend came and picked me up from the yogurt place. When we pulled out of the parking lot, the man in the truck started to follow us. I texted my aunt to tell her that I would be about 30 minutes late for lunch. My friend took a bunch of back roads in the area and drove through some confusing neighborhoods, and we eventually lost the truck. My friend is my absolute hero, and he took me back to my car in the parking lot. I was going to run some small errands before going to lunch, but that obviously didn't happen. This incident just occurred a few hours ago, and it's still making my head spin. Forgive me if it seems kind of lengthy, but an awful lot was said. 
I'm an 18-year-old female. My mother, sister, and I were shopping in our local Target. As we strolled around, I recognized a girl named Stacy, who's also 18. I used to go to school with her. For reference, I dropped out of high school in my senior year. So I haven't been in my old high school or even seen anyone from there for about a year now. I simply glanced at her and kept moving, doubting that she even recognized me. A few minutes later, I'm on the complete opposite side of the store when I see this girl again. Like last time, our eyes awkwardly met and I tried just to walk past her, but this time she actually said something. Hey, didn't we play tennis together? Stacy said with wide eyes and a painfully large smile. There was a girl standing next to her, but I didn't recognize her. I simply replied yes in response. I was never friends with this girl in school. In fact, I never talked to her or even liked her. That's when she introduced herself, as if I completely forgot who she was. She goes on to question if I still went to high school, to which I explained that I graduated a year early with online classes. The conversation started out normal. I thought we were simply catching up, due to the fact that I had been absent from school. I kept wanting to cut the conversation short. But Stacy kept prodding about what I was doing now, if I was in college, and what was college like, harmless questions. Then, the conversation took an unexpected twist. Stacy somehow weaseled the conversation into one about God and Christianity. For reference, I do consider myself to be a Christian, but not one of those hardcore ones who are constantly spewing Bible quotes at strangers. She asked me if I attend church, to which I respond with yes, and her smile grew even bigger. Her whole mantra about God sounded something like this. Back in my high school days, I was always partying and having fun, but it was all fake, and no one knew I was actually pretty sad. That's when I found this church that showed me God's way and his undying love. He accepted me, and he'll accept you too. Now I'm always happy, for I have God on my side. At this church, God truly appears before your very eyes. He cured me of all my physical and mental ailments, like when I messed up my knee playing tennis. The whole time Stacy spoke, there was just a robotic tone about it, as if her words were memorized, practiced, and rehearsed. There was almost no genuine emotion in her, just wide eyes, and her never-failing smile. Then her friend Ashley, who was in her late teens or early 20s, began her speech. Keep in mind, my mother and sister are just an aisle away, waiting on me. Ashley's speech went something like this. For a while in life, I suffered with depression and suicide. I was always faking being happy, until I found this church. This church truly opened my eyes and my heart. I no longer feel dead inside. This is when she hinted that maybe I felt dead inside too, and the only way to recover from it was to look to God. Ashley also used the word zombie to describe this dead feeling, and that's when I began to really think that there was something wrong with these girls. Ashley continued, I don't think it's a mere coincidence that we ran into you. God led me to you. He wanted me to reveal to you the way. God put a vision in my mind of you opening a present, and that present is our Lord and Savior. She kept on ranting about how this was destiny, and that God put Stacy and Ashley in my path to reveal himself to me. When Ashley mentioned depression and suicide, I couldn't help but believe her for a slight second. I have been struggling with depression for years, but I've kept it quiet, and with me being a believer in God, I was almost fooled into thinking that this was a sign from God, telling me to finally open up and get help. But when Ashley began to ramble about her church, that foolish hope dissipated quickly. Then the two moved the conversation about their church. They kept stating that it was not just a normal church, and that God himself, in flesh and blood, came to them at that church. They informed me that God came to them to heal all their miseries and grief, Ashley then pulled out a business card, which had the church's email, a Bible quote, and her personal phone number. 
Before the anticipated departure, they kept saying how cool I am and that they were glad to have met me. Then we finally parted ways. I remember my legs being extremely weak as I walked away. That was when it clicked in my mind. Are they a part of some kind of cult? Their mannerisms and behavior seemed too scripted to be real. That's when my sister found me and answered my suspicions. Apparently, before I had to endure that 10 minute chat with Stacy and Ashley, my sister overheard the girls having the same conversation with someone else on the opposite side of the store. So this was all scripted and it was their way of luring and persuading strangers to join their church. I realize now how they do it too. To reel me into their discussion, they talked about my absence from school and my experience in college. To reel in the other girl they talked with, they started off by complimenting her outfit and inquiring about her artistic hobbies. I wonder how many people they ended up talking to and if they were just walking around the store hoping to find easy targets. I still have so many questions and that's what bothers me the most about this. Being the somewhat religious person I am, their talk about God unnerved me. It's sort of humorous to think about it now, simply because I think crazy God lovers are comical, but I'm still bewildered. If you have any information about how cults operate and how they coax people into joining them, please let me know. Does this incident sound like cult members trying to spread their message? or harmless teenage girls simply spreading their love of God. If you have any other questions about what occurred in my interaction with them, please ask. It's also possible that I will see Stacy again because she is attending my college next semester. Although Stacy and Ashley seemed harmless and just overly excited about God, I honestly just hope to never encounter them again. This happened to my best friend around two years ago, who I'll call Sarah for privacy reasons. We are both studying in the same city, only at different universities, so we're living in different parts of the city. One day, while Sarah was studying for her exams, she realized that there was no food in the fridge, so she decided to go out for a walk and do some grocery shopping. There was a fairly large and well-supplied supermarket close to her apartment complex, where she stopped by for some fruits, yogurt, and noodles. She spent around 15 minutes in the supermarket, only to be greeted by a complete stranger outside who started having a small talk with her. He acted like they knew each other, although Sarah is positive that she had never seen him before. Overall, my best friend is a very polite and tolerant person, but also very cautious of strangers. She described him as a short, overweight guy with a goatee and a wide, odd grin on his face. On the other hand, my best friend is tall, and she seems like a girl you would not mess with. She noticed that his fingers were somehow twitching while he spoke, indicating that he was nervous. The guy was at least 35 years old, and my best friend was 23 at the time. Immediately, she realized that something was wrong with this guy. First, he greeted her by saying he had spotted her in the area a few times, and then proceeded to ask her on a coffee date at a nearby cafe. Sarah was just standing there speechless, and politely declined him, saying she wasn't interested. It made him really mad, so he kept insisting that she go with him. When she refused again, he angrily told her that they would see each other again soon, calling her by her real name. She was absolutely dumbfounded by this, wondering how on earth this creep had found out her real name. She had no clue who this guy was. He didn't seem like a university student at all, but rather a construction worker, judging by the clothes that he was wearing. A bunch of questions came to her mind. She was afraid that she may have been stalked by him, so she threatened to call the police if he didn't just give up on his advances and leave her alone. Obviously, my best friend wasn't in the least interested in this creep, but if you think her story ends here, then you're wrong. The next thing she did was part ways with him. He stood in the same spot for a moment, and then, as she said, hopped into his car and started following her for a few blocks down the street in a dark colored car with tinted windows. When Sarah realized this, she got even more scared, so she had to take some lesser known routes in order to get to her apartment complex safely. The sun was just starting to set at this point. After some shortcuts, she managed to arrive back safely before dark, but she was left feeling paranoid from the whole incident, wondering whether he knew where her apartment was. She never reported the incident to the police, although she vividly remembered his facial features and overall appearance. Fortunately, 
Nothing ever happened after this, and she has not seen the guy since. I really hope it stays that way. My advice for everyone is to stay safe out there, because sadly, there are a lot of narcissistic people who just can't take no for an answer. So I just got back from the store and I've got to tell you about this experience I just had. It may not be as scary as some of the other encounters, but it still gives me the chills. Let me start this story off by saying that this morning I wasn't in the best of moods. I had to work the graveyard shift last night and I woke up after only 4 hours of sleep with my back absolutely killing me. I couldn't get back to sleep so I decided to run a few errands since I was now wide awake. I needed to get a haircut while I was out as well. My sister works at a salon that is right next to a Target. So after I got my sister to mow my scalp, for free by the way, I popped over to Target to grab a couple of items before heading home. So I'm just doing my thing and pushing my cart down the frozen food section, and I turned the corner to go into the next aisle. When I did, there was a middle-aged lady that was pushing her cart heading in the opposite direction. I nearly bumped into her but then stopped before our carts collided. She gave me a mean look and then said in a really mean tone, Excuse me! Now again, I have to say I wasn't in the best of moods, and I'm a short-tempered person as it is. So without thinking, I take a shot back at her and then said, Oh shut up, you're fine. Call me an ass if you want, no one's perfect. But what happened next was just pure insanity. The lady then suddenly left her cart and then started to follow me. I noticed this about halfway down the aisle and I then turned around to ask her what her problem was. And then I kid you not, she rolled her eyes to the back of her head, pointed at me, and then screamed very loudly. And when I say screamed, I mean she was literally shrieking at the top of her lungs. It was like something right out of The Exorcist. I hurried down the aisle to try and get away from this insane person but she started running after me. Needless to say, all of the bystanders immediately stopped what they were doing and then just stared at us. The lady kept screaming like a banshee at the top of her lungs while she chased me around the store. Well, I noped the hell out of there, ran out of the exit of the store, and I looked back into the store as I was heading for my car. The lady was standing just outside the now open automated sliding doors just staring at me. While she stood there, her mouth was hanging wide open and she was still just pointing at me. Her eyes were still rolled right into the back of her head, and all you could see were the wide of her eyes. She suddenly turned around, then quickly walked back into the store. I decided to pick up my stuff at Walmart that was just down the street instead. All I could think though the entire drive home was, what the hell was that? That was insane. So to the creepy screaming possibly possessed banshee lady, I mean perhaps I shouldn't have been so rude to you. But you still have more than one screw loose in your noggin, and you really need help. But anyways, I definitely hope to never encounter you in the future. So when I was 16 years old, I got my first job working at Target. Most of what I would do is just walk around the store tidying up and just stocking up shelves. Pretty easy job. One day I was stocking up food when a guy comes up to me to ask where a product was. I told him and I offered to show him where it was so I walked him over and then started to leave. He was like, hey wait! And assuming he needed more help I went back over to him and then he immediately started grilling me with questions. How old are you? What ethnicity are you? Where do you live? Do you always work here? And then to my dismay. When do you get off work today? He had a really creepy and unsettling smile, and he was vaguely cross-eyed, which in this weird situation just totally added to his creepy vibe. I just told him that I didn't know when I would get off work and deflected most of his other questions, and then walked away. A couple of days later, he appeared in the store yet again and found me. I was really scared when I saw him, and he asked me again when I get off work and what I was doing after work. Again, I said I didn't know and started to walk away again, but then he started following me and then started telling me that I was so beautiful, just like his wife. Yeah, it was getting weird and I was getting really uncomfortable, 
So I tried to find a coworker and try to talk to him to get him away from me, or at least have someone else to witness his weirdness. Well, I couldn't find anyone, so I said that I had to go work at the cash register instead. That got him to go away, but not before he gave me the creepiest smile that I'd ever seen, and then said, I'll see you after work. I was pretty creeped out at that point, and Casey stalked me home after work or waited in the parking lot for me. I didn't want to tell my manager since, I mean, I had just started my job, and I didn't really want to make a big deal out of it. I know, pretty stupid decision, but luckily nothing happened after work. The guy stopped showing up, and I don't think I ever saw him again after that. I guess he just wanted to scare me, but still, it was pretty creepy nonetheless. I'm a short, medium-sized girl. One day around the time that I was eight months pregnant, I decided to make a trip out to Target to buy some things. I'm a very cautious person, constantly looking at my surroundings with mild paranoia, which was mostly inherited from my mom, who raised three kids all on her own, so she was always on guard. I got out of my new car, which I parked a little far from the store entrance for two reasons. I didn't want to get any dents from the other drivers, and I tried to get as much exercise as possible since I was pregnant. As I'm walking, I notice a huge red truck with three men inside of it with the windows down. I assumed that they were just waiting for someone inside the store, but something creeped up my neck when I then made eye contact with the driver. I quickly turned away and then immediately began to feel self-conscious. A small girl that was visibly pregnant. I suddenly felt so vulnerable. Up until that point, my pregnancy was pretty smooth and never really made me feel like a target. Once I finally got in the store, I started to calm down a bit more and feel a bit relaxed and went about my shopping. When I left the store though, I noticed that the same truck was still there. I put my bag in the trunk and got in my car as quickly as possible, then quickly turned it on and drove away. I noticed in my rear view mirror that the same truck was also taking off, with the same three men still inside of it. My heart sank. I had realized right then and there that they weren't waiting for anyone inside the store. I got into the lane that can only make a left turn, and they were in a lane that can only go straight a few cars behind me. I thought, great, we're not going in the same direction. I was just being paranoid. As I passed the light now turning, I see the red truck then switch the lane that I was in to turn left. I then sped up to catch the next light turning yellow to put as much distance between them and me. I drove a little faster than usual but that's when I realized that even if I made it home, they could still follow me there and I would be going home to an empty house. So instead, I decided to drive past my street right to a shopping center that had a Starbucks. The drive through wraps around the building, so you're not going to be visible to the main road which I was driving in. I get into the drive through and I notice the red truck was going on the road that I just left. They drive past the Starbucks and I think, good, I'm in the clear now. As I'm still in the drive through I then see the truck pass by again in the opposite direction, almost as if they're looking for me. I wait in the drive through for all of the other cars to leave, and I decide to call my sister and tell her I'm heading to her place. I didn't want to go home alone, and my boyfriend wouldn't be home for several hours. As I'm driving to my sister's house, which is about 25 minutes away, my mind just begins to wonder if they had ever caught up to me or what could have happened if these men were following me. Any possible danger that could have happened to me or my baby made me so paranoid that I didn't even leave my house for the remainder of my pregnancy. By the time I got to my sister's, I was absolutely shaking over it. I had told my sister all of the details and everything that happened. I never did see the men again or their red truck, and I'd really like to keep it that way. I had a seasonal job at Target last year. Every year they bring in new people during the seasonal times to help with all of the chaos of this pending season. It's pretty standard, just about everyone was doing this. It just happened by chance that I was doing it at Target. I think it's actually funny. I don't think I've ever actually been to Target until that job. But anyway, it was actually a night shift position. I would come in and start working at around 4am, and that was one of the crucial times to get stocked up on stuff for the big shopping rush that day. 
Now, the way we did it, it was we would get a shipment off of a truck and all the supplies would go onto the back. We did that as fast as possible so the truck driver could get on with his next stop. Those guys were always in a rush. And once we got the stuff in the back, it was up to our team to get it all organized and stocked. And that was all fine and dandy, pretty standard procedure. Now, there was normally a good number of people who worked this shift with me, normally between four and five of us, with the manager somewhere else doing whatever else managers do, but here was the situation. The layout of the store was a little weird. We had so much room in the warehouse area for all the supplies, but sometimes it would be too much, like drastically overflowing. And we had this other room to put some of the stuff we just couldn't fit anywhere else. It was a weird situation because that overflow room was not very big. I think it used to be someone's office. I don't know what happened there and I don't really care either. That was the job. It was a true nightmare to organize the stuff in that overflow room. It was a really tight working space because it would normally be two people in there doing that and the rest of the team would be outside. This room was kind of secluded as well. It was just kind of out of the way and didn't make sense to be a storage spot. Again, not my decision, just what I was told to do. It was one of these early mornings that I had to work in that overflow room with a guy I didn't know that well. He never said very much and he looked a little sketchy. I'd actually seen him walk off of the premises a few times after getting a text message. It was really weird. It was never for very long either. It was like he got a text message and went outside to take a smoke break or something. No one ever said anything though, so he just continued to do it. Honestly, none of us really cared that much. I didn't mention we came in at 4 in the morning, right? Well, this one morning that we were working in the overflow room, something a little strange happened. He got a text message and went outside like usual. I asked him where he was going and he just said he'll be right back. He left before I could say anything else, but I noticed he dropped something as he went out. It fell on the floor and I went over to pick it up. I could tell you exactly what it was, but... It looked like a clear Ziploc bag of herbs. Honestly, they probably weren't herbs at all, but being really tired and overworked, I assumed he was a gardener and he was carrying his herbs around. I know. I know how stupid it sounds. I have a lot of friends that are really into gardening, and I guess I just assumed the best case scenario. When he came back, he seemed like he was in a rush. He was looking around frantically. I told him he dropped his herbs. I pointed to them on a table in the room, and that was when he got really aggressive with me. He asked me if I thought it was funny. And that was when it dawned on me that he wasn't walking around with lavender in his pocket all day. It also dawned on me that he was probably selling while he was working this shift. That would explain why he would randomly go outside every once in a while. He threatened to kill me if I said anything to anyone. And I was honestly scared to death. I didn't know what to do. Looking back, I probably should have told my manager and called the police right then, but I never really had to deal with anyone that was a criminal or anything of that sort. Of course, I didn't say anything to anyone, but now every time that I saw him, he gave me a weird look. We'll just call him David for anonymity's sake. And that wasn't his real name, but it'll work. Over the next two or three weeks, I started to observe David a little more closely I paid a lot more attention to what he was doing and what he was looking at and how he was behaving. And after that time, I realized a few things about him. Firstly, he was definitely a drug user himself. I couldn't tell you what, but my guess is that it was something pretty hardcore. He would talk to himself like a crazy guy once in a while, and other times he would just completely zone out like he was in a different planet. The other thing that I noticed about him was that he was very unstable. Sometimes, he would get really upset over very minor stuff. There was one time he screamed at the top of his lungs because his shoe was untied, and other ridiculous things like that. Now, while all of this was going on, I was still living my life. I still went for runs at the local park, and I made YouTube videos in my free time, just for fun. I tried to forget about the whole situation with David. That was until I saw David at the park, where I always ran. He was sitting on the bench staring at me dead on. I stopped mid-step. That was the scariest realization ever because it meant that he was stalking me and I didn't know what his intentions were. I didn't know how long he'd been doing it or why. I just knew that I was in danger. 
I kept running and played it off like I didn't notice him. But oh boy, how could I not? Then there was one morning where it all went down. I showed up a little earlier than usual. I was always on early bird and I just hated being late. I was there about an hour before my shift started, must have been about three or so. I was chilling in the parking lot listening to a podcast on my phone and that was when I noticed someone pull up behind me. I parked kind of far away from the store to not take up parking for the customers throughout the day. I just thought it was unusual for someone to park so close to me when there were spots everywhere else. My heart sank. The person behind me turned on their brights and that was when I knew it was David. My fight or flight kicked in. I turned my car off and sprinted to the store as fast as I possibly could. I knew the employee would be open and I would be able to get to safety there. David started driving after me, like trying to run me over. He probably would have gotten to me too, but there was the spot where it was a line of trees in the parking lot. I ran to the other side of the trees when I noticed that he was driving and he couldn't really do anything after that. I got inside and screamed that I needed help. Surprisingly enough, my manager was there. I explained the situation to her and we called the police. She locked the employee entrance and we waited until the police gave us the okay. Obviously, David had booked it. The cops couldn't find him either. He wasn't at his apartment. Apparently he gave the wrong address when he applied to work there. I guess they don't check the seasonal workers very thoroughly at Target. Hopefully they do now. And that was the story of how I almost got messed up working at Target last year and if you're wondering, I don't plan on applying again this year. <laughs>